Welcome back. Well, here's a really fun project. We're uh, modifying the ideas we did earlier to use actual images as our textures to build a really compelling um, worldview. So here I am in a walk navigation. I'm on my little island. There's a waterfall. There's some mist. I've got clouds. I've got ocean. I've got this little rock garden thing here. So this is pretty fun. And of course, this is exactly the sort of thing you'll be able to build pretty easily. Um, I really love it. Of course, we'll put some, some buildings on here and monsters and so on. But this is how we will use textures to get even more compelling um, graphics for your environments. All right, so how do we do it? We're going to start with the new blank screen. Now, I promise it won't look exactly like this. It never looks the same way twice. We are um, getting very close to the world of art right now. So um, things are going to always be a little bit different, but that's what's beautiful about it. So I'm going to add in a plane. I'm doing a lot here. Let me turn on my little um, screencast keys. Good. Um, scale the plane by 25. That's going to be my ground. Um, typically, we'll subdivide. So subdivide so I can do some sculpting. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's plenty. Look down at that. That looks pretty good. Um, we'll be doing a UV map, but I'll wait on that. Let's go ahead and turn it into sculpt mode. So in sculpt mode, remember by definition, there's symmetry. We're going to turn off um, we could have left it on for now, but it's fine. Um, and I'm going to actually have a lagoon pretty much enclosed by mountains. So you recall the sculpting tools. Since I'm going to have a sort of a, a sky map around it, I'm not going to have much in the edges. Maybe I'll leave a little place for the ocean to come through there. Um, we don't want things looking too regular. In fact, let's go ahead and do like I did before. We'll build a little jetty out here. We'll make a really high mountain up there. Cliff diving, anyone? Okay, that's good. We don't want things looking too regular. We want it to feel somewhat natural. That's nice. That's that's pretty good looking. Let's see. Yeah, we need higher. Higher mountains. Come on. We're not messing around. Seven. Turn off perspective just so I can be sure I can tell what's happening all around. Cool, I like that. There's more we could do with sculpting, but this is pretty nice. You know, a little island in the middle? There you go. I'm taking care of you. Okay, so that's pretty nice. That's too regular looking. Now, we want to make this look like a realistic landscape, of course. And there's many things we can do, but the rough um, view of it... Well, that's, that's pretty great. Now what we want to do that we haven't done before is apply actual image textures to it. And that turns out to be not terribly difficult. Let's go back to object mode. And um, I'm going to come over here to the textures area. Now before, we've never applied textures without a material. But this time we're going to bring textures into the world space. You see this texture belongs to the world. And then I'm going to use this texture to build a custom texture for this particular plane. Huh? Well, let me just show you. So I'm in the texture area and I'm going to do new image texture. Now this is a little bit different than a UV map. Um, this is a texture I'm going to use to build a UV map. So I have gone onto the internet and found a tileable texture. You want tileable, that means it's designed so you can't tell where it seems. So you want seamless or tileable textures. There's tons of them out there on the internet. So there's my water. That's pretty nice. Um, so I'll have a water texture. Let's see, I've I, um, downloaded four. Of course, you can find as many as you want. Go open it up. It's on my desktop. Here's another one with some grass. I typically keep around a water and a grass texture all the time because I can do a lot with them. Um, other textures I like um, is gravel. So I'm going to go find a gravel texture. The reason I like gravel is you can do a ton with it, as I'll show you. It doesn't have to look just like gravel. Um, so I want something that's a little bit random. That's pretty great. Let's call that gravel. And then uh, two more textures we'll use. Um, in this case, uh, I've got some rocks. It was like a rock wall originally, um, but I'm going to use it as sort of a jetty. As uh, You'll see what I'm doing with it. I mean, we can do lots with it. I'll call this rocks. 
Now I am indeed a rock star. Okay, now we need one more. This one's interesting. This one I'll make a new and I'll make it just white. Okay, and interestingly enough, although it's white, I'm going to call it color. And uh, you'll see why that's really handy in a little bit, but that turns out to be a really handy kind of a texture to have. Okay, so this is great, um, but it doesn't really do much for us yet, does it? No, it really doesn't. We want to do some UV mapping and texture mapping. So the first thing we'll do is make sure that we have UV mapping working correctly. Um, so let's go to the um, UV mapping, UV editing panels. Great, make sure I'm looking at things the right way. I want it to be in texture mode. Um, boy, that tells me we're going to have troubles with that light, so we'll change that a bit. Um, for now, that's fine. We'll fix it later. Okay, now we want to map onto an image. No, let's fix it now because it's just going to bother us. Um, let's make that a sun. And we can play around with ambient light too. Let's also pick it up a bit so we don't have such horrible shadows. Alt R to zero out the rotation so it's pointing straight down like noon. That's pretty good. All right, back to UV mode. All right, so now, of course, we need a default texture to attach to. So I'm going to create another new image. This time, again, I want it white. You could make it any color, but white makes it easier to see what's going on. So I'm going to make it white, blank. Now we'll come on over to our original object. Go to... Um, edit mode, and UV unwrap it. So after I've done all of the pixel manip manipulations or the vertex manipulations, that's when I'll do a UV unwrap. And so now I am mapped to this white image. Okay, super, super. That's great. Um, just for fun, let's make sure that we save that image. I'm going to first call it um, texture mass. So I remember it's the master texture. And then I'm going to save this image, save as techmass.png on my desktop. That way, in case anything goes wrong, I'll have this image. I can reload it and have more fun with it later. Um, it doesn't automatically save all images, as you remember. So we want to make sure we explicitly save that image. Um, even if we don't save it with the Blender file, we want it saved somewhere. All right, now that we have this image, um, we can go back to edit mode and we can start doing some texture painting. So, oh dear, <coughs> we went, <coughs> excuse me, when we went to texture paint mode, things went all purple and it complained as it often does. Well, don't worry, we come over here to slots. And we tell we want to paint on an image. Now we just tell it which p image texture mass. <coughs> I don't know where that untitled came from, but that's fine. Okay, so now we have our white background to paint on. Um, and that is going to become an image that will be more interesting and beautiful. So uh, we'll go back to our tools. Now before I showed you how to do texture paint with just images. And that's really, really, or with just colors. That's really wonderful. But now that we have some textures around, we can click on this texture tab and select any of the textures I've already loaded. So let's start with water. So I have this water texture, and remember the way the pen worked, it has a radius and a strength. Those are perfect for starting places. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint my water in place. Now you want to make sure that you have the mouse down and you keep it down for one long stroke because as long as I'm in this single stroke, everything will look even. As soon as I pick it up, then we'll have a darkening effect. That's not terrible, but I think for this first pass, I want my water to all be about the same shade. It's perfectly okay if you miss some areas, if you get it in the wrong places. It's a very forgiving process, um, but that's not bad. There's our basic water. Now, just to be sure, let's save this image. So save image, alt s. Every once in a while, I like to save the image because I have, in fact, lost it. All right, super. Um, make sure I'm looking down. Make sure that 
Uh, I have the perspective off. I'm going to switch now to the grass texture. And all the land I'm going to try to paint with the grass texture. Now don't panic. Sometimes you'll find that um, you'll miss spots because if it's perfectly vertical, this approach will be hard to get absolutely everything. That's completely okay. It doesn't really matter at all. Um, again, you know, I'm channeling my inner Bob Ross. There's no mistakes, just happy accidents. So there we go. We're going to get that pretty nice. And if you spill over a little bit, no big deal. That's a feature. That's now a water plant or something. Okay, that's pretty good. Let me show you also, if you want to watch on this side, just switch this one also to paint mode. And now I'll turn off numeric input, turn on tools. And in fact, I can do the same thing over here. So if I want to touch up a little bit, um, I can use the grass tool. Now notice the scale is different and also it's going to be a little bit darker because the scale is different. That's okay. I'm going to call that a feature, not a bug. Um, you can adjust it, but honestly, I like a little variety in there. So I can uh, simultaneously work on either side, and that's sometimes really, really handy. Okay, I like a little variety, um, but let's go ahead and put in um, some, some gravel, maybe some beaches. Again, we'll go find the gravel. And now this is going to be a little bit too big. It'd be okay on this side. If you'd like, you could do it on this side or on this side, either one. I think it's convenient. It happens to be about the right size. So once again, I'm going to try and keep it a single stroke. And just cover all of the area that I want. Oh, I forgot that island. Let's get that island. I also picked up my mouse, but that's okay. Again, we're not going to stress about things because the great thing about these natural landscapes and so on is that they're supposed to be. That's just now a sandbar. They're supposed to be not perfect. And it's perfectly okay if it's not perfect. I'm going to put some grass right there. So let's make that little island in the stream. That's about perfect. If I want to, I could put a little beach around that. You want a beach around that guy? Okay. That might be too much, but I don't think so. As I look down inside, I get in there. I really love it. This is looking really pretty good. That's about what it ought to look like. And already, we're looking pretty good. Now, we got some, some edges to deal with, and that's really obvious right there. Um, so we can fix that right, right quick. Let's go back to object mode. And sometimes when you switch to object mode, you may still have some problems. So don't panic if that's the case. You may have to just make sure you're in... in uh, texture preview mode. Let's change the shading to smooth. That helps a ton. Now you can see we've missed a couple of spots here. Not a problem. I can go touch it back up anytime I want. I've missed a spot right there as well. And again, not a big problem. But before we do touch up, let's go ahead and add maybe that stone jetty. And again, it's the same sort of deal. Go into texture paint mode and Select my rocks. Now, interestingly, the size of my brush will in indicate the size of the rocks. So if I make this brush radius smaller, if I zoom in tighter, I'll tend to have more rocks closer together. It's fine, whatever you want. You just want to be consistent with it. I love that because this is supposed to look a little bit more man-made. I'm going to make it more straight and squarish. Okay, that's good. I don't really want it going up the hills, but I want to cover up the water there. Of course, I could put a little building there or whatever else. That's really cool. Now let's talk about some, some touch-up things that we could do. Um, let's talk about this white texture. I love this trick. This is one of my favorite, favorite little tricks. Because now what I'm going to do is with a white texture, I can add interest. I can add different kinds of highlighting and, and so on. And so I'm going to drop down the strength quite a bit to about 0.1. And let's say this is my mountain. If I just keep touching it up, I'm going to put snow on top of the mountain. And so I can use a small amount of white to lighten up any place I want. And so everywhere I want to do it, I can just put a little bit of white to soften things up. We can do it in the water. We can do it on land, but that's not all. Of course, what if I want to darken things a bit? Fine, I'll come in and put just a splash of that red in there. And that adds tremendously to the interest. And so that's a really wonderful feature. But that's not all. 
<clears throat> not only can I add these colors like this, I can take a texture and tint it. So gravel, again, I really like. In fact, what I really like is white gravel because I can have a lot of fun with that to make interesting highlights in any color I want. It's getting a little dark. Let's put some yellows in so we can brighten things up with some yellows. Oh, that's so fun. Well, how do we do the waterfall? Well, let's take some water, turn it back to its default color. Okay, and I'm going to make this much smaller. So we'll go with a radius of, say, 10. 9 is good. Um, now, because I won't see the back, I'm going to draw it all the way through. I'm also going to make this much stronger, 0.75 to 0.8. That's good. Now we'll have water go all the way down there, and I'll have it maybe branch out a bit. That's really cool. So I'm drawing with that water texture. Note that having a smaller scale makes the water darker, and it makes the texture more pronounced. Um, that's really cool. Of course, I could have done that everywhere if that's what I wanted. Um, now, because it's a waterfall, we're going to go ahead and make the little... Um, you know, the, the little mist at the bottom. So I'll go back to some white, make it not super, super intense, and just color in some white there so it feels like the water is bubbling up. Oh, that's pretty cool, isn't it? So you see we've got some nice stuff going on here. To complete the effect, let's put a sky in place. Um, and again, um, before I do much more, I'm going to save my image just because sometimes it goes away, and I'm pretty happy with this. Um, now I'll just go and um, append from someplace else. Let's see, I already have one. Um, that's a sky that we built in an earlier example. Okay, it looks a little distorted because of uh, where we are. All right, now let's go to default mode, look through the camera, and do walk navigation and see how good our place looks. Turn on some gravity. Oh, I'm in the water. It's okay. I got boots. There's my little island. Here's my little waterfall. Oh, it's gorgeous. There's my little hill. Here's my mountain with snow on top-ish. You can't see much of the snow. Um, we could fix all that, of course. You can see how much fun we could have with this. Now we need dragons. Um, we could make the an ocean. We could make a boat out there. Oh, so much fun to be had. There's our little rocks, and you can see we've got nice little rocks. Build some castles and stuff, and we are ready to party. Isn't this cool? Yes, this is very cool. Okay, come back next time. Believe it or not, there's even more fun to be had.